Hey y'all, let's talk about channels in C-Sharp, what are they and how they work. But first of all, let's talk about the motive behind creating channels. So if we have some kind of logic that calls another piece of logic, but it's not dependent on the outcome of this second piece of logic here, we might have a producer-consumer problem on our hand. So in this scenario, we know that uh, logic A will produce some kind of outcome and logic B has to handle it, but uh, we do not know how to synchronize them without uh, coupling them tightly. And this is where channels come in. They may solve it by uh, defining the contract, so the event, and uh, transferring it from the producer to consumer. In this scenario, producer does not care about what the consumer does with the event or even that it exists. It just needs to tell that the event occurred and the consumer will handle the rest. So to solve this problem, you have a couple of choices. If your problem is small, you could build a queue yourself. You would have to use logs and the downside would be that you will add a lot of code into your application that you will have to maintain and tweak. If your problem is at scale, you could some kind of uh, cloud-based provider for a, uh, their messaging queue services. So for example, Azure has service bus, but it may not be applicable to every case because it will, first of all, has to have to use external service and it will cost you additional money for it. And uh, you may not need such a big uh, solution for such a small problem. So that's why the channels when were introduced in C-Sharp. They are self-contained in your, in your application and they are great for mid-scale problems. So in the example, we'll be exploring our minimal APIs tutorial code. So let's say that we want to refactor the delete handler because it takes a lot of time because we are deleting every piece of data for the user for GDPR reasons. And let's say that we also call some external services because uh, we also create this user in some other services as well and we need to uh, optimize it. One thing we can do is to write to the channel that uh, the user of ID X and wants to be deleted and handle it in the background while returning the uh, accepted call to the user right away. Therefore, we'll optimize our call and we'll delete the user in the background. So let's navigate to our users module, in which we can see that we have our map delete endpoint and it uh, calls the handler logic. And let's assume that this takes a lot. So we just want to return the no content right away. So let's see how our delete user channel looks like. First of all, it has the private read only channel of type delete user DTO property. The delete user DTO just contains the ID of the user we want to be deleted. And the constructor creates the channel. It creates it via the method create unbounded because there's also the bounded version which is uh, caps the limit of uh, the amount of uh, items that can be written to the channel. But in our scenario, we don't care about the limit. And I think in the most scenarios you won't. And we have also our three methods. So first of all, uh, we allow the user to delete uh, to be written to the channel. We have our non-blocking call until something is uh, written to the channel. And the last method is to retrieve the, th the thing that is uh, written to the channel. In an ideal scenario, we would uh, split this into two interfaces. One would be for the writer and one would be for the reader. But uh, the default Microsoft dependen dependency injection container does not allow us to use the forwarding. So forwarding just stands for uh, registering something under two or more interfaces. So if you're using some more sophisticated dependency injection container, you might uh, want to split it into two and register it under two interfaces. But for the purposes of this video, let's just use one. So now that we have our channel created, let's see how we can use it. First of all, let's start writing to it. We inject the I delete user channel uh, here and we write to the channel the user that needs to be deleted and then just return no content here. Uh, and we get the ID of the user uh, from the session from the current user. So pretty simple stuff here. We refactor the handler directly injected here to the channel. And let's see how we can use this uh, channel to write uh, to read from it. If you've seen my previous video on uh, hosted services, you will know how it looks like. And if not, uh, the background service here is just launched uh, on the start of the application and it works until it is uh, exited out of this method. So in our context here, we won't be calling the cancellation token here uh, anytime. So it will just work forever in our application in the background. 
and will be awaiting non-blockingly in this uh, wait to read method. And once we have something in the channel, we try to read it. If uh, we cannot read it somehow, we'll just display to the uh, application that uh, something went wrong. You would normally use a logger here, but I just wanted to keep it simple. Uh, otherwise, uh, if everything is okay, we'll just log the fact that we'll be deleting the user. Uh, we'll get from the scope factory the actual handler to delete the users. So this is just the delete handler. Uh, it will call our entity framework code to delete the user. And uh, we call it here. And then proceed to go back to the loop here and await other users to be deleted. The last thing to do before starting our application is to make sure that everything is hooked up correctly. So in our users module where we register all our services re uh, related to user, let's see how it looks like. So first of all, uh, we register our channel as a singleton under the interface that uh, we implement. So pretty simple stuff. We want it to be singleton because we want our channel to be created once and reused throughout the application. We register our hosted service as a hosted service. So uh, it just allows us to start it in the background. And we also register a singleton of scope factory for the delete handler so that we can retrieve it from the service scope factory by creating a new scope each time we read something from the channel. So let's see how it looks like in action. So we have our endpoints here and let's just create a user. Okay, so our user is created and we can log in. So we can uh, actually retrieve the token. So we have our test123.gmail.com and our simple password. And we have our bearer token. So now we can call our delete endpoint with that bearer uh, token uh, here. So let's just add it into the uh, header. So now we'll call our uh, method uh, to delete the user with the appropriate header. So we'll uh, know that we are actually who, who we want to be. And as we can see, the endpoint is launched. We uh, get the user and it, as we can see, the email is correct. And we add it to the channel. And as you can see, we already have uh, read something and we'll see. Uh, as you can see now it uh, is working parallel. So we'll return to the user no content while we already started to delete our user in the background. So as we can see, we'll log out the ID of the user that we want to be deleted and we'll retrieve from the handler, the delete handler. And we can jump into it and see that we'll uh, remove it via the entity framework and go back to it we see that our cancellation token is not requested and we will be awaiting to read until another user wants to be deleted. So as you can see, we now decoupled our endpoint uh, from the handler itself. We just now returned the uh, confirmation that we accepted the call and we'll uh, deal with it in the background. So with it, you can see that the possibilities are limitless. Uh, you may use uh, channels in tandem with background services. I think they work uh, best this way. So you have your way to consume actually the, the things that uh, the channel uh, has been written to. And with that, I think it's the end of the video. If you, have, if you have any questions, let me know and I hope you enjoyed.